Hello everybody and welcome to another Saga Saturday. Today, we're gonna to talk about patterns. We're gonna talk about patterns on Sagas. I worked over the weekend and I worked early this week and I didn't film anything, but I've been making some really good progress on patterns. Check that out. I posted a bunch of stuff on my Instagram, got a lot of really good feedback from fans and customers and machinists. Check that pattern out. It was supposed to be, um, you know, that cross-hatch pattern all the way across, but then the end mill broke. And it went really deep. So that one turned out super cool, although it is very um, aggressive, and I actually notice it putting a piece of paper under the pocket clip that the extra grip of the pattern, like, kind of makes it annoying going into the pocket. So I gotta be careful it, this hasn't been tumbled or deburred yet, so it, it'll get better over time, but um, got to be careful making it too grippy, especially under the pocket clip. We can't really leave a section under the pocket clip not patterned because the pocket clip, you know, when you unscrew it, the pocket clip kind of rotates in any free direction. And uh, I want it to be able to kind of land anywhere. We could leave a section not patterned, we could totally do that. Might look weird, I don't know yet. This pattern, the dimpled pattern, kind of a golf ball-esque pattern, looks pretty amazing. Um, biggest feedback I've gotten, people are kind of on the fence whether the pattern should go all the way to the radius of the tip right there. You know, I, I tend to write kind of like, like this, so I am holding on the tip. Um, I don't write so much holding back here on the pattern, but I, actually I've been using it for like three days now and wow, I freaking love it. Uh, it's just an eighth inch ball end mill that goes doop, 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 moves over, pop, 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 moves over. Um, so it's a relatively simple pattern. No burrs coming off whatsoever. It feels amazing, looks amazing. Uh, it shimmers, like from a distance, you see this thing. It looks really, really cool. Would I want it all the way on the tip? I definitely want to experiment with that someday. Um, probably not going to happen anytime immediately because uh, all I can fit is a tube this big. I can't fit a tube and a tip in the Willowman at the moment without getting real creative. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, another thing a bunch of people suggested that we've noticed here in the shop is that if we had the dimpled pattern matching on the slider, it would look phenomenal, and I totally agree with that. However, there is a lot of complexity with doing that, and I don't want to set a precedence of matching the pattern on the tube with the pattern on the tip with the pattern on the slider because those three components are made on three different machines. And I don't want to hold inventory of every pattern ever so that we can mix and match and mix and match. It gets very complicated. So what we did do is Pierre is actually making sliders right now. He made a bunch of plain sliders with no engravings whatsoever. They look kind of cool. We might just start selling those as is on, on assembled pens. But I could also take a slider and I could make a mandrel that holds it from the inside and screws it down and then mount that on the Williman and easily and quickly say I dimple a tube, I could then dimple a slider and have a matchy matchy. That's probably the way to go. And I was thinking about the uh, mandrel, it'll be actually really super easy and repeatable. So that might be the way to go. But yeah, I mean, overall, my goal with this, my purpose was to unlock the ability to machine a tube on the Willowman, and I have done so. I've got two very different patterns, and it, it shows how cool they are. It, it just does, it's really cool. Uh, okay, was it? let's jump over the Willowman. I wanna show you what I got. So here is my setup. We have the vise up. There is a um, ball bearing, just a classic ball bearing in here with a little um, pokey thingy that I made. I got a bunch of them. This guy, so if you sand the nub off, this is what fits in the other side of the tube. And then on this side, I just made a brass, also tapered thingy. 
So if I jog out the U-axis, so right now my, my tube is kind of loose. And if I jog the vise, the U-axis inwards, I can make that tighter. A little bit tighter, it's got some free rotation right now. A couple more clicks at uh, 1,000 per division and we're tight. And honestly, I wasn't sure if that was gonna be tight enough to actually hold the milling forces, but it is. It's not amazingly tight, it's not insane. And I've taken a magnetic base and an indicator on here because this U-axis is hydraulic and you can overcome it. If I jog the U over, this thing's gonna tilt out. So I put an indicator here and I can measure, call it five tenths of compression uh, is kind of where I'm leaving it. And that doesn't affect the run out of the pen too much. So this setup is actually, it's kind of janky and it's kind of simple, but simple is good because simple got me to do it and simple got me a result. And holy, the result is phenomenal. So the problem is the U-axis cannot move anymore that way. I can move like, like a teeny tiny bit, just enough to loosen the tube. Here, let's do it. Jogging, jogging, and it fell, perfect. That's well, good to know, it doesn't fall down. So it lets me take it out, put it back in, jog the next one in place. So on this side we have a live center and on this side we have a dead center. And the dead center, because this is a milling spindle, like a rotating spindle, I can clock it accordingly. <clears throat> and somebody was asking that they couldn't tell if there were any locating features to do this. When we chamfer the inside of the thread, we, we've done a 60 degree chamfer so that I can make a 60 degree center and I planned this five years ago and now we're finally like using that feature. So that's super cool. If I take this pen apart, take everything out. So now I have a tube and a tip. And I wanna hold that. This setup is not gonna work. I would need vice jaws that come out far enough this way and can hold it either in the center there, because there is a chamfer in there, although I think it's a 140 degree uh, like spot drill chamfer, or I can make a reverse cone that cups the tip as a rotating live center again, and then I can pinch it again and then pinch it there, and that's probably the way to do it. So I could make some vice jaws that extend, come out, and have the same bearing, but with like a cuppy thing right there. And that is the way to do the tip of the tube combined. However, I still have to, um, I still have to manage the joint. Like you don't want to machine over it, you don't want to machine through it, you want to avoid it, or maybe we just machine through it, I don't know. All right, so this being the very first saga that, from us anyway, that has ever had a pattern, I am absolutely loving it. I think it's really cool, feels amazing, looks amazing, writes amazing, and uh, we're definitely onto something here. The cool thing with the Willamette is because you have the B axis that can rotate down at 90 degrees, um, you can do some really crazy stuff with different end mills. So for example, I have two simple end mills here, a quarter inch ball and a quarter inch flat end mill. And I used an eighth inch ball, so half this size, to do the dimples. But what's really cool is you can do offset balls. That sounds weird. But I can hit it from the side. I can draw grooves like this. That way I'm not dragging the tool down the center. I can hit it from the side. I can hit it from this way. I can angle it. I can angle it this way. And then same with a flat end mill. This is where it's gonna get really interesting. If I want to take this flat end mill and rotate it at say 45 degrees and then make a cut this way, like a plunge or a slice, it's gonna make like a sliver. And I can do that bop, 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 bop. I can even come off to the side of the part uh, in this way and I can go like this. I can just, I can make some really cool features. And this is where the artistry and the creativity and the tool paths and the way the tools work and the angles that whatever machine is available to you um, 
you start to combine all this together and you create some real magic. And I haven't gotten that far, but I know in my head it's possible. So once I do program up some tool paths and see in simulation like what it looks like, man, the infinite possibilities, absolutely. Um, the whole team here has a lot of really good ideas already, so we're gonna start slowly to implement some of those ideas and just see what looks really good, what's sustainable for us, and what we can keep making of. And uh, yeah, I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I think I need a lens that focuses closer and faster is what I need. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys tonight. It is almost 11 p.m. and I am going to sleep. All right guys, see you next week, bye.